Hey guys, I'm Kate with the Audience Awards and we have Alex Finden with us today. Hello. Alex is a two-time Fusion Doc Challenge finalist. Um, he's participated in the Project Earth Doc Challenge and Fusion Doc Challenge itself. Mm -hmm. His film Stonefly won Best Cinematography for Project Earth Doc Challenge. It's screened at Doc NYC. We'll be going on to screen at the Environmental Film Festival in our nation's capital. Mm -hmm. Um, and at the International Wildlife Film Festival yeah. um, in April. And then Weapons of Beetles um, will be going on to screen at the Big Sky Documentary Film Festival. Yeah, and a little, just a couple of weeks, huh? Yeah, coming yeah. up here pretty quick. Um, so, and just in case you guys don't know a lot about the Doc Challenge, filmmakers are given 120 hours to create a documentary, four to seven minutes in length, under an assigned genre and theme. So it's not an easy task at all, not a usual no. film project. <laughs> um, yeah. So when you received the prompt, um, minute one, um, what was that process moving on? So uh, for the first one, for the Project Earth Challenge, okay. um, I knew right away that whatever the prompt would be, I would probably have something. Um, I'm a natural history filmmaker by background, so knowing that there was a conservation, environmental-based topic, I was really excited about that. I think it's fantastic idea. Um, so yeah, minute one of receiving the prompt, one of the topics was extinction. And uh, last, let's see, I guess it's a couple of years ago now, um, there was a film that came out called Racing Extinction, which was pretty popular. And I was um, at one of the premieres of the film in Jackson Hole. And that was very inspiring for me um, as a filmmaker and as a activist. So when I saw extinction on there, I figured that's definitely the prompt I'm going with. And then it was just a matter of figuring out, well, what is in Montana that's facing extinction, facing endangerment? Um, so I jumped on the phone with people from the Forest Service, people from the national parks, people from the state parks, and I figured out, luckily in the first few hours, a few potential topics. Um, from there, I was just figuring out how feasible those were. And I think that's the most challenging part for me anyway of, of this timed documentary process. I mean, you're, you're finding a real story, right? You're not making this up. So being able to get people together to produce something in 120 hours with you, give their time to interview, and then actually go in the field and hope you find the animals you're looking for, I, I can say I got pretty lucky with Stonefly. Very cool. Yeah. So this was definitely a very passionate project for you. Yeah, it definitely was. Mm -hmm. So what were some of the pros and cons that you faced in the 120 hours? So the 120 hours, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of cons I could go through. <laughs> and a lot of filmmakers would think right off the bat that there's quite a few problems with having to do something in 120 hours. Um, the biggest pro was that... I mean, you can't, you have to make decisions, right? Especially in editing. It's like, this has to be done in 12 hours, so what am I going to cut out? And I think that actually ends up making your film better because a lot of the time we go through this six month process shooting all of this footage for a documentary and we want to keep all of it. And because, you know, well, it took a long time to get this shot, so that one's going in when maybe that's not the best decision. Um, so in the 120 hours, you can only get so much and you end up using a lot of it because you don't have a lot to work with. Um, but it, it really helps phase out the stuff that doesn't need to be in there and just tell a short, concise story that people are going to want to listen to just for a few minutes. Um, so I think that there's a lot of techniques I learned in that process that I would use even outside of a timed challenge. Awesome. Yeah. So um, going forward, do you have any other plans for Stonefly festival screenings or um, anything like that? Well, so there aren't any festival screenings outside the normal circuit. So okay. the last one will be, I guess, the Audience Awards Festival. Yes. Right? Um, but I'm going to take the seven minute version of the film and I'm going to use it as sort of a, um, a pitching device because I would like to reshoot the interviews, um, add in some other content and sort of flesh it out to be maybe 22 minute length, half hour TV spot sort of thing. Okay. Um, I think that there's a lot of potential in that story. Um, for those of you who don't know about stonefly, it's basically the story of how this little bug called a stonefly, there's two species up in Glacier National Park that are potentially facing extinction because of the loss of the glaciers. 
Um, they're the canary in the coal mine for that park and for climate change's effects on the environment. So this would actually be the first species other than the polar bear that's listed because of effects of climate change. Wow. And that's big. I mean, that's something we need to be paying attention to right now. So Absolutely. Um, and it's just this tiny little bug that nobody would otherwise care about. Mm -hmm. But that's the first one that's going to go because they rely on that glacier water. And in 10 years, when all the glaciers are gone, I mean, it's not a question of is, if they're going to go extinct. It's, you know, we've got 10 years. Right. And so does everything else that relies on them. So. So did you know about this, the stone fly, before um, no, getting the topic and researching a little no, bit? No, I, um, I mean, I knew that Glacier National Park was, was receding. I didn't know it was that quickly. Wow. And uh, I, I figured there must have been effects, obviously, of, of losing that permanent water source. But, um, yeah, it's interesting that there are animals that directly rely on it and exist nowhere else. Right. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today. Sure. Um, we look forward to following your film through the festival circuit and whatever else comes for it. Yeah. Um, thank you guys all for tuning in. We'll see you next time.